Hello, my name is April Vollmer. I'm an American artist and I specialize in Japanese woodcut. I have a master's degree from Hunter College in printmaking, but it wasn't until 1995 that I found someone in New York City, Bill Payden, who could teach me the basics of this technique. I found it very difficult to find enough information to translate it into my creative work. I felt there was so much missing information in the American printmaking world. I was dedicated to printmaking. I love the logic of it and the way it helps you focus your ideas through these stepwise processes. I finally went to Japan in 2004 with the Nagasawa Art Park program and I returned to Japan a few times since for the International Mokohanga Conferences, each time learning a tremendous amount more. And I felt there just was not information available about this wonderful Japanese technique. So I wrote a book about what I had discovered. The part I feel most proud of, most happy with, is that I included the work of about 50 contemporary artists who do Japanese woodcut. And that was an attempt to sort of open people's eyes to the creative possibilities of Japanese woodcut. So now I'm going to do a demonstration of some of the basics of the technique. This is the print I'm going to be demonstrating this morning. It's a kingfisher and it's made from two blocks. It's printed water-based with just a little sumi ink, a, a pale block and a darker block. And here's the two blocks that I'll be using. This is the pale one that I'll print first. And this is the darker one that I'll print second. So brief overview of the tools. You can see the Kento registration here. This is unique to the Japanese technique. So when I print, I'm gonna be, this block is dry now. When I print, I'm gonna fit the paper into these little marks so that I can register the two colors. And my paper is all set up here. If I was doing an addition on good Japanese paper, I would dampen them with my dampening brush. Dampening brush is different from the printing brush. Dampening paper brush, mizubake, would dampen the paper like this, it's soft. The, um, the uh, printing brush, hangabake, I guess, is for printing and they're stiff horsehair brushes. So I'm gonna be printing like this. But before I dampen the block, I wanted to show you a little bit about the tools. This is shallow carving. And it's been carved with the hangito, the knife for the sharp edges and details, like these little thin parts in the, in the tail. It's held like, like this in the fist so that you can, and pointed to with a index finger the other hand. And then it's cleared with these fan beveled chisels. I have a whole series of um, chisels, including these little ones that are called Aisuki and the big ones called So I Know Me. These are the most useful for, for clearing and they're unique to the Japanese toolkit. In the West, we have a lot of U gouges and V gouges, um, which are in Japan too, but these guys are special. And the one I find most useful is this, this one here, the Aisuki. You see, I've already carved the details out with the knives and small gouges. But to clear the big areas, you really want to smooth it out so it doesn't emboss into the paper. And I found when I printed this block earlier, this, these margins were embossing into the paper. 
both hands on the tool, you want maximum. You also notice I'm standing square and my mind is on the tip of the sharp tool. So I have the maximum control. Both hands on, even, let me back up a little. Even with this tool, I have both hands. The power comes from one hand, but I'm engaging the other hand by pointing at it for the detail. So this one is used like this. Okay. So this is the dark block. I'm going to set it aside to print after I print the pale block. And what I'm going to do to prepare it, let me dampen it a little. It takes a while for the moisture to move into there. for the block to become conditioned and wet enough to print smoothly. And I've already prepared this one for printing. It's already a little bit damp. So let me set aside my tools. God, I'm going back and forth a little. I didn't show you the Kentonomi. This tool is a chisel, and this tool is only used for the Kento. Can you see the Kento? This block is pretty clear. I've outlined it in red so I don't miss it, and it's cut specifically with this tool. Okay, so I'm going to just Maybe fold that over so it's not distracting me. And I'm going to do a printing two colors with water and a little paste. And this is called nori. And it's so easy to use it out of a jar or out of a tube. But you can make it yourself from um, re refined rice flour. Uh, you can buy a bag of it for relatively cheaply. The problem is it doesn't keep. So this stuff has a little bit of preservative in it, so it keeps longer. If you mix it yourself, you heat it up on a double boiler, and it's very nice, but it'll only last a few days. And a little bit of Sumi ink. This is just standard calligraphy ink. You can get better qualities of ink, depending on how much money you want to pay, but for the demo, I just have a little standard. So this is going to be a pale color, right? Let's see. Now, which Beren should I use? Should I use the really lightweight one? Or the synthetic one? This is a Murasaki Beren. This is a Honbaren. Which means it has a coil made from this sheath. This bamboo sheath that's covering it is uh, sliced into strips and braided and coiled for the interior here. Uh, and this is the strongest one. Uh, 
ball bearing barrette. But it kind of crushes the paper, so you want to hesitate before you use this one. So I think for this print, it's a big flat area, so I need a little bit of pressure. It's good to wait a little after you dampen to get the block saturated. Now I've got two brushes here. I'm going to dampen this one for... Okay. So let's see, which one did I say I was going to use this one? Now I didn't, so that's my first color, pale, because it's a lot of paste and just a little ink. And that's the first go around, so let me set it over here. I'm going to put my nice brush away, because I didn't dampen the paper. Just for demo, it's a little easier. And this is, this paper's soft enough, so it'll print okay without being dampened. The other thing I like to emphasize about Japanese woodcut, you can't do just one. Once the block is warmed up, the brushes are moist, everything's all set up, you know what beren you're gonna use, it's important to keep going. So I'm gonna print four in sequence and you see how quickly it goes once you're set up. Let's see, a little water, a little paste, and a small amount of, col of color. I bet this one's going to be darker though. So during the warm-up you're getting the amount of color adjusted. Let's see. Slide it in there. That's the Kagi Kento. This is the Hikitsuki Kento. Now this time, I'm going to hold it down. So I'm going to do a little more here, 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 and here. With my second brush, I'm going to bleed it out into the flat area. So without moving the block, I've added a little gradation on the tail and the shoulder. And I'm gonna keep these over here. You can, you can just pile them up on top of one another. That is a huge savings in doing Japanese woodcut, unlike water uh, um, oil base. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm, now I'm trying to adjust the amount of color so that I get the same each time. And you have to go through a lot of printing to get there. So some of that. And then this time I'm not going to add color because I already added some with that gradation printing. And I want the first one to be kind of pale. You want it to be damp, but not wet. No puddles. No dry spots and no puddles. Hold it like this. Thumb on the kento. Thumb on this kento. Let it drop. Oops. I decided this was the best one for this print.
<laughs> and then something heavy. I could just a little. Just a very small amount. And I'm using a different brush then to gradate that out. Let it drop. And so is this okay? Let's see. Now I'm trying to get it the same as this one. Really hard to keep them consistent. Okay, one, and I have one more, one more block, one more uh, print. Yeah, ideally you want the paper humid and lying flat and limp, limp and absorbent, but not wet. So I don't know if you can see, I've got a, like a thin layer of ink and paste on there. Well, um, this table is slightly low. I want a stable table so you can lean into it. I always carve sitting down, but print standing up. Because you need to get your back into it. You're really pressing, but covering every part of the image. See, a little too dry there, a little too wet there. It's always balance. Stay there. Let's see where we are now. So they're gradually getting to a point where it's evenly moist and I have a better sense of how much I need to add each time. And I got the little gradation. Okay, so that's my pale color. Now I'm gonna switch to my dark color. Always rest your block vertically so it dries evenly on both sides. I have another print on the other side. You can use these both sides, it's really. And I tend to use the sheen of plywood because it is so light and flexible and it doesn't warp when it's wet. Um, of course, you can use any kind of wood for woodcut, but the sheen is very uh, easy to work with. Okay, now this block, I'm gonna have to start dampening it again. And what would we do without McLean's? Most of my tools are from McLean's too. If you're fortunate enough to go to Japan, you can sometimes find good Japanese woodcut tools, but McLean's is a key resource and has been for many years. Now let's see, a little more water. And it doesn't make sense to buy plywood from Japan because the shipping is so expensive. Even though I'm going to Japan for conferences a few times, but those are special opportunities. Here in the U.S., we rely on McLean's a lot.
Okay, so this is a darker block. I'm gonna go back to my bigger brush. This brush is a uh, horsetail, also from McLean's. The horsetail is stiff. Remember the water brush is soft. I think it's goat hair. And this is a stiffer brush. Still feels a little dry. The humidity makes a difference too. This technique developed in Japan, particularly in Tokyo, which is very humid. So I want a little more color this time. See, the preparation takes all this time. And now I'm gonna change Berenz and use this one this time. Let me put these out of the way so I don't grab them by accident. This one's stronger. This is a honbaren. Hon means true. So this is a beren with a coil made from the bamboo sheath. So it's stronger than what the one I used for this lighter one. Um, okay, I'm gonna prepare my paper. If I was using good Japanese paper, this would be wrapped in plastic. Remember, I'm printing upside down. So I'm gonna set up my papers upside down. I just happen to have my kentos on this side of the block. Uh, let's see, am I gonna need this? I'm not sure. My handy dandy weight. Well, let me check. Yeah, I think I do. I think I did the gradation on this one as well, along the shoulder just to get it really even. But first I'm doing a darker color all over. Okay, let's see what we got. Now I'm going through the same sequence. Remember the first one didn't have any gradation. So let's see what we got with this one. I want to do the same gradation that I did on the other one. Yeah, I think it gives it a little more um, dimensionality. Let's see, where's my small brush? Okay, so it's getting there. But now that I'm set up, I wanna keep going. And once you're set for your addition, you got your paper, you've selected your baran, you've made any correction to the block. It's good to just keep working because your block is going to be nice now. It requires focus. Okay, see, I'm getting there. See the stripe? That's in the block itself. So I'm like, mm, I don't want to emphasize it, but I kind of like that you can see that it's made with natural materials. So I don't fuss about that too much. Not too dry, not too wet. And then I'm going 
gonna do that gradation. Just a little bit using a separate brush so I don't get the colors mixed up. See, it's getting darker. It's getting a little bit richer each time. So one more. both hands again your whole body is engaged you know you can't print like that you have to really focus your energy on getting the ink up into the paper Okay, so here's the final one. This should be the best because my block is warmed up and I've like figured out how to adjust it. And for myself personally, this is only the first step. I recently I've been working on cutting, the, cutting them out and pasting them on digital prints uh, so I can combine some architectural themes that I've been working on. I also can multiply the image by printing it in different orientations. Like remember where we started? This one's printed twice on the same paper, but I could print it four times. I could print it over another image. Uh, Japanese woodblock gives you incredible flexibility for combining and recomposing. And it's also given me access to uh, an international group of people who are interested in this technique. And I've made friends in Japan who are happy that I'm promoting this Japanese technique and Japanese culture more generally. This is, this is a really important part of Japanese culture. I didn't learn Mokohanga until 1995. <laughs> I've been doing it a few years and every year I learn more and more, even now. I mean, I still feel like a beginner. Always more to learn about this technique. It's very deep. I mean, you can get the basics down, um, but once you get the basics down, it is easy and you and flexible. It's good for kids. I mean, it's it's ink and paste and no no toxic chemicals. You can do you can do so much in a small space.